Part three. Yes, I'll just repeat it again. If you use a precedent, make sure it fits, i.e. it's internally consistent with the contract you are inserting the precedent into, e.g. check definitions, clauses. So, for example, in that exercise we just looked at, okay, if we use that, we needed, if we hadn't checked the definition of property, okay, we would have missed amending it to say buildings on the property because otherwise that issue with the white ants would have affected the whole certificate of title. You got me? Yes. Okay. Um, last but not least, number six. Last but not least, number six. If you are using an industry contract... If you are using an industry contract, check if a pre-prepared one already exists. E.g. REI contract has lots of special conditions. Okay. Yeah. A lot. Okay. Okay. Um, I'll just come at the moment. Um, so AXA has some too. That can be used with its contract. Okay, that can be used with its contract. Dash, don't reinvent the wheel. It's safer. So for example, on the extract, you know, on the RISA ones, you'll see lots of them on the website on the RISA ones, but... Example building inspection report, mm -hmm. and so on and so forth. That you could just when we when we talked about when you filled out the contracts in your exam, um, you did the easy special conditions. You know the finance ones, um, su sales subject to the sale of the property. Where you're just filling in the boxes. Well, many of the precedent ones. You look at, the, for example, the recent ones. You'll see there's lots of these little precedents that make it much easier. So we're not having to manually write these. Details down. We can use the precedent. Another thing, um, you also find um, some some um, some contracts um, have what I call key special conditions. And there's an example on the assignment. What I call key special conditions in relation to um, preparing them. Okay. Um, So if you look at the key special condition, I call them key special conditions, um, because if you look at uh, the one that's on the assignment, you've got a precedent special condition, and you'll see, uh, I'll just, um, so, just bear with me just a moment. You'll see on the special condition, you've got a base special condition which is drafted, and then you've got A, B, and C. So in paragraph one, you've got A and B. So this contract is subject to the purchase obtaining at their cost A, insert information A below, um, the document from B, and then at three, you've got mentioned to C. If you turn the page over, you'll see different alternatives that you can put in. So, for if it was a white ant inspection report, under that where A is, on the first page, you could write what's in A. At B, you could write the holder of a current relevant South Australian pest controller's licence, C. No white ants are present. If it was a salt ant report, you could put A, B and C in at the appropriate steps. If it was a soil test report, you could put A, B and C again in the appropriate steps. Building inspection report A, B, C and so on. So I call these key special conditions. So they're typical special conditions you call key special conditions. Well, they're just, they're just a phrase that I, I've, I've, so I've get, made up with these. So you can take yeah. them out and put them where? Yes. So, so with this document, yes. you know, depending on what the special condition is, you just fill in A, B and C, depending on the type of special condition that you were putting in, yeah. and then you'd, you, you could use, you know, use one of these as far as the special condition is concerned. Yeah. So again, you're using a precedent... 
So you're not re to, to, to actually save you time and make it more safer, but you've always got to check that the key special, this, this special condition that you're using matches the contract that you're attaching it to. Do you with me on this or not? Yeah. Okay. Gosh, when you yeah. said a couple of minutes ago, saying that Reese and Axel have got lots of them, were you referring to only these in the contracts, or were you saying that on the website about no, no, no. members no. that got lots no. of them? No, if you, if you go, if, for example, if you have a look at the Reese contract, you'll see, I'm like, on that, I've given you an extract, which is just part of the Reese contract, and you'll see, see two examples on there. You've got one, a building inspection report, you've got a grounds of probate, and there are many, many others in there which you just, we just fit on with the contract. It's the last page. Last page. Oh, I have it. Okay. okay. And then you've got the grounds of probate. Yeah. Now, just a couple of examples. If you go on to the Learn site, you'll see lots of them. Okay. Um, so, okay. So, I don't want to scare you to death, you know, about special conditions, but I just want you to. to those little tips, you know what I'm trying to say, suggestions on how to, to essentially think about them. And what did I say to you last lesson when we're talking about risk? I wanted to change your what? Way of thinking. Way of thinking. Because I want you to start thinking now Save about saving... That's not the wording I was actually going to use... <laughs> Um, but looking out to make to, to protect yourself. That's what I'm really. That's the word I'm trying to try and protect yourself and to start thinking strategically. Yes, I'm going to do everything I can for my clients. I'm going to do a great job. I, I want to enhance my reputation in the industry. I want to be. I want to do really good work. But I also want to protect myself from anything, anything that comes up. Become cagey. You know, just to protect yourself, to change your mindset in the sense that, you know, you want to protect yourself. Because I don't want to, I don't want to scare you to death, because I can tell you now, we all make mistakes. And do you know, when we often, well, you know when often we make those mistakes? When we're rushing, when we've got lots of things to do. It's, it's easy. And, and the backdrop to all this is, I don't, want to, I don't want to be having nightmares about this, because that's what insurance is there for. But what I'm trying to say to you is just that... Yes, try and do your best to the maximum, that you don't rush, you, you, you take your time, you think about things. Um, there's an old saying, you don't go into things like a bull in a china shop. Okay? You think before you leap, which I think is a good piece of advice in life. Even if you're very familiar okay. with the task or something you're doing, yep. you still then have to not rush through it. Oh, that's right. Mistakes, and, and also double check things. Yeah, yeah. You know, so, like it may be, and this is a simple thing, it may be, yeah, yeah. Um, I know I've done this. I've done this a hundred times. Da, 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 da. Did I check the section of the act to see if there's any amendments? Oh, I don't think I have checked it for a while. I'll just go on to Osley and just make sure that section, which is it's about, it, there's no drama. It hasn't been updated. There's nothing there. Yeah. You know, legal updates and so on. And usually the industry, you know, if, if they're serious ones, you'd normally expect your right. associations notifications say so they would watch out for this. But I'm just really saying to you to, to get into that mind frame. Not to be scared, but just try and protect yourself, take your time, and get things done correctly. Actually, Gemma gave me a website to go on and join. Every time there's a change to any legislation or anything, they send you an email. Yep. Well, for phone yeah. 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 Ye
And how would you find out if he wanted to know if it doesn't appear in the property interest report? Well, I, I would be asking. I would be asking the vendor. Because you've just told me that the vendors have... You, you, you've just told me that the owners have been notified. And just ask them to confirm and give them a guarantee that they haven't received a notification that this... Well, well you can email them say, can you please confirm or not whether you've received notice about cladding? If that's, if that, if that's, an, if that's, a, if that's an, a matter of an issue for you... You see, if you don't ask, they're not going to disclose. And that's when we come back to Section 18. Why Section 18 can be so important. Because... If, they're, if, 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 they're, if, if, they're misle- if the response is misleading or deceptive, then you've got a breach. Yeah. You see? They probably quite haven't thought of yet incorporating that in there, but they but, should. Well, they, maybe they will do, when, if this becomes an issue, which I obviously... It's just mainly government buildings. No, no, no dwellings, no, because there have been a number of high-rise, like, apartment blocks and stuff, mm. and had the bus for cladding and caught on fire. Hmm. And look, it's a significant issue, isn't it, really, when you think about it, after what the events that have occurred in the last couple of years, mm-hmm. those high-rise plots. Mm-hmm. OK, um, now, just um, um, before we finish, um, assignment. Um, read the questions carefully on the risks section now. I think I got you to do that for homework. <laughs> Remember, I'm not, ask, I'm not after essays. I'm, uh, uh, you know, fancy oh, examples. I'm, af- I'm after simple, relevant examples of, you know, make sure you put the consequence down if it's breached, you know, what the penalty is, if it's a breach of a section, if you're going to get sued, potentially for damages, you write that down, and then put the simple ways that it actually can be, can be prevented. And usually they're quite simple. All right? Otherwise, in, in your assignment, read the questions carefully. Okay? So I, I'm, there's, I think there's one on a special condition. I, I'm not expecting, I'm not, you're not required to write a special condition. But you do have to look at, I think in the question it says you have to look at the precedent and look at, at, at the question carefully. Okay, now, yeah? So, I've got a question about the capital gains of holding tax, right? Because it doesn't, it talks about residency, not about citizenship. If you're an Australian citizen and you were living and working overseas for a few years, right, and you sold your property in Australia, planning on buying another property back in Australia when you moved back home, would you have to pay foreign resident capital gains tax on the property sold? Because... Like I said, it doesn't talk about you being a citizen, it just talks about you being a state resident. Right. You have to look at the definitions. definitions. Whatever the definition is in the Act. Yeah. That's what you have to look at. Yeah, the definition of a citizen is a resident. You check it. Well, if that's all it says, that doesn't answer the question. It's all it says is a resident. Yeah, but you have to look at the the primary source, which would be the legislation, and see what it says. And that's that's a report on that that, um, matter. But you'd have to actually look at the, de- the definition there. I would normally expect, if you're an Australian citizen, that you wouldn't have to. But it's Foreign Investment Review Board approval. And you go onto their website, you can usually find that information out as well. I think I did have a bit of a look around, and I couldn't find the answer. Maybe I wasn't looking at the wrong yeah, part. So what act yeah. should I look at for the, for the definition? The tax act? Of, of, the, of the relevant act, yes. The, the tax the, act. Yeah, that's brought it in. Mm. So go on, to, go on to Osley and do a search. Put in capital, withholding capital, and see what comes up on Oslo. All right, that'd be that'd be good for what we've just actually done tonight. Well done, Julie. I like that. Okay, now, so that's it. As far as the land contract is concerned, you're finished. Um, next, um, you want me to do some exercise again, Justine? Is that, is that is what you're, you're hoping? Yes, it's, it's exercise again. Is it? Okay. Um, so, look, land contracts is done. Next term, you'll be looking at land titles, okay, which will be the... So, you'll have assessments in that, but um, you've, most of you now have owned... All you've got to do now... Some of you... I don't think anybody here... Somebody... Most of, most of you have now reviewed your, you've, have reviewed your exam. Mm-hmm. Um, quite a few of you have actually done your telephone assessment. Some of no. you have, some of you haven't. I don't think okay. you've done that. Yeah, yeah, I have. Oh, I last checked on Monday and I didn't see any emails. Did you do it yesterday? Uh, it was a week, week or two ago. But I've got some, um, I've got some next Friday. But I, I, did, I haven't emailed the class due, so I thought you'd all completed it. Last Friday, last Friday. Last, yes, I've got tomorrow, but they're booked up. Yes, I did a couple of weeks ago. Okay, I'll have another look. I had a good look. I couldn't see it there. Well... Um, it would be the same email, you'll, you should have one, it would be the same email, but those, the dates for last Friday and this Friday are all booked up, but next Friday there are still dates, so what I can tell you is 
regardless of your email. Um, I think two to four, send me a couple. Um, an email in the morning to sit time. Friday, Friday, yes, yeah, twenty second I think is the next one. It's not booked, and uh, I think it was two to four. So maybe if you, I think two and two thirty have already gone. So maybe three, three thirty, four o'clock. Email me and quick as you can, okay. and then I'll put, I'll put, I'll put you down. Okay. So there's right. only the other assessment that we've just started that you got us to do. That's it. Homework and this so, one. That's it. So, and you're almost done. Yeah. 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 Get question seven and eight. Get question seven and eight. Um, for the review, for the email, you send me an email. Oh, you sent me an email. You know, and I said I'd check it. Yeah. I haven't done that. Mm. Oh, okay. Tomorrow. <laughs> Listen, tomorrow, email, follow-up email. Okay. Since we've got time, we haven't finished yet. Can I talk about that story that I saw on TV? Hold, hold on just a moment. Okay, good night, everybody.